Well, all right, let's get started. Big, big week this week. We got San Diego State versus Fresno State. Matt, tell us how the vibe is around the Aztec football team down there in SoCal. Well, it's definitely a vibe now. (laughs) (laughs) I think we can both relate to certain degrees, man. This game last year was totally different, right? I mean, both teams were coming in, flying high. Hayner was thrown all over the field. We were doing some things defensively. This year, woo, it's been a long one, man. I mean, we've gone through a lot of changes, as you guys can relate as well. But coming into this week, you know, it's it's no excuse time, right? We finally got our new quarterback in there, switched over from safety spot from the defense. You know, sometimes necessity brings about leadership, right? So we definitely needed it. And now, hey, toughest test to date for the young man, Jalen Maiden and the Aztecs. And man, it's going to be wild on Saturday. Yeah, it is. No kidding. Going through the gauntlet, Fresno State and San Diego State both kind of had a topsy-turvy season where you feel like you're up here and then all of a sudden you're way down here and you go, dude, what's going on, man? Well, you guys tell me, man, what, what's going on with uh, Mr. Hayner? Is he going to play or is he not? <laughs> I want, I want the real. Let's, why don't you take that one? Why don't you break it down? What's going on? With uh, I, I wish we knew. Uh, you know, our coaches are really secretive about uh, all injury information, so which is frustrating, but I can also appreciate the gamesmanship. Um, so practices this week have been closed to the media. Uh, they haven't done that uh, yet. So uh, either uh, they don't want people to get a look at Hainer or they're trying to put a smoke screen up and he's still not close. So. Um, we don't, we don't know, honestly. Um, I've been predicting, though, since the injury that this would be the game he comes back um, just because you know, it's about six-ish weeks. High ankle sprain should be you know, enough time to come back from that. Plus, it's a big game, you know, important to both teams. So I've kind of had this one circled really since September uh, for Hayner to come back. We did see that like Jake's like third cousin twice removed put up a screenshot of some kind of <laughs> Jake's ankle with a chip in it and when when uh like a fracture of some kind and when Tedford was asked about it Tedford kind of kicked it under the rug and said ah I don't know what they're talking about so it could be a lot worse than what we're seeing on our end and we're hoping that it's not a fracture but we got to say a say a shout out to that third cousin that nobody knows about that's trying to get their 15 seconds of fame you know all the sources all the sources you got to <laughs> dig deep got to get the <laughs> Got to get all the news. Well, I'll tell you, and I hope he plays. I mean, you know, he really impressed me last year when he came down and and really beat us in Carson, California. Like, that was an impressive performance. We thought we were going to get hands on him all day. He took some big shots, and he stood back there in the pocket, and he made things happen, you know, with his arms. So I hope he comes back because I want to play the best. You know, I know Fife has had some pretty good games his last couple games, right? I mean, you guys have been getting creative with him, but, you know. I want Hayner, man. Yeah, I think I think we were surprised against San Jose State. I mean, really, the the story of the last two games has been our defense. I mean, only giving up uh, ten to San Jose and you know nine to New Mexico. Um, so that's kind of been the story of the last two weeks. And you know, against San Jose, we we're kind of lucky to piece together enough offense to get the victory. And then New Mexico just is New Mexico. So uh, <laughs> I don't really have anything else to say about that one. Well, well, let me ask you guys this, because, I mean, seeing Hayner go down so early in the year, that had to be devastating. Had to be. So I was in Vegas watching us get totally ran by Boise. And me and my buddies, my co-hosts, we look up at the screen and we're seeing Fresno losing to UConn. Like to go through that to where you guys are now, like, how are you guys feeling? Because that's, woo, that's, that's pretty tough, man. Alcohol. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. To no, yes. no. I, uh, uh, like I said, topsy turvy. Let's can attest. We were talking beginning of the year. This is a team that should win a New Year's six game. That's how right. good we were. Then you lose, you lose it at the buzzer to Oregon State. Sucks. You go play USC. Jake rolls his ankles, bummed out, and then you get blown out. Sucks. Then you fly across the country and lose to UConn, and it's unacceptable. And then you show up to Boise and put a like just a terrible performance in. So the red wave has give or take some a lot of fans have kind of been like, you know what, this is a bust of a season. And like we have a chance to make it just like San Diego State. And let's yeah. let's hear about what your guys' thoughts are. Like 
you said you did the vibes good. Let's talk about your team a little bit because both of us are still very much in contention, even though our seasons have been up and down, right? So, so let's talk about your offense a little bit. Who should Fresno State fans uh, keep an eye out for on Saturday wearing the Aztec red? Well, I think you you hit it on the head, man. It's pretty interesting that both of us are saying the exact same things to each other in the locker room, right? The destiny is all in your hands, you know, everything in front of you, it's all there for you, the championship, all the goals that you have, they're right there for you, despite what you've gone through. We both won two games in a row now. <laughs> for us, that was the first time. So it's like we're both in similar spots. Our offense had to go through hell to get to where we are now. I don't know how much you guys pay attention, but our offensive coordinator for the last three years was let go of uh, after that Boise game. And it was just, you know, it's hard to explain because he had been with us for three seasons. And, you know, all the past years we've won in spite of the offense, you know. Fresno is very known for having quarterback culture, for having those receivers. Us down here, since we've been, you know, on this 10 or so year run, it's been largely the defense ground game. And this was supposed to be the year that we took that next step with our quarterback, Braxton Burmeister, the, the Virginia Tech transfer. Well, that didn't work out, you know, and there's only so much you can blame the kids when, you know, we were like next to last in passing efficiency, in offensive production, you know, nationwide. So finally, after that game, they cut them loose and it was just a mess quarterback situation. We had to get somebody in there. Like I said, got Jalen Maiden, who was our fourth string last year, switches because they had him switch to safety in the offseason. He starts playing at least, you know, 60 snaps, proving himself on the defensive side, and they had to call him back to quarterback. So he's really the one you got to watch out for. I mean, right? Quarterback's the most important position. Coach Hoke wants balance in this offense, finally, after being so run heavy. That's been the goal, to have balance. And they have it now, but... Like I said, this is our biggest test with him now at the quarterback spot. The running game has not been what you're used to seeing with an Aztecs team. The passing game is finally now to a respectable level, level, but he's got two games under his belt at the FBS level, and this is his third start. So Jalen Maiden's the one to keep an eye on. He's got excellent quarterback skills in the pocket. He knows how to manipulate the pocket. He's a very calm, cool, collected guy. Um, he doesn't have like the biggest arm, but he can sling it. Um, the main thing, like I said, is though his pocket presence. He, he's not a run first quarterback. He's definitely looking to throw first, but as proven last week against Nevada, I don't know if you guys saw that play, that 30 yard touchdown play. I mean, it was pretty incredible. You know, the skills that he's shown with his leg was pretty impressive to escape and score. Um, he's a big bodied quarterback. Um, so he's the main one to watch out for, man. Yeah, I mean, it's been kind of an interesting story to watch develop. And um, I mean, I'm curious, like, you know, Jesse Matthews is someone that like I've admired for the last three years. Like, I think he's a stud. And like, is there like any frustration there with either team or fans that like he's not like getting, you know, the ball more? I mean, Shavers is really impressive, too. Um, from what I've seen so I mean you know you do have the two weapons on the outside it's just you know can you get him the ball I mean this offense isn't lacking of talent at the skill positions you know there's plenty of talent at the wide receiver spot plenty of talent in the running back room and the tight ends as well but when when your offensive game plan from the get-go is just completely dysfunctional yeah man you were getting fans just completely bitter because here we have this stud. He's a stud, man. Jesse Matthews is, is an incredible player. And you can't even get him the ball. The targets, I mean, it was it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. So now that we got this change with uh, Jeff Horton, who was our offensive coordinator back in our back-to-back -back championship years, he's assumed the position, brought in Ryan Lindley as our quarterback coach. He left Mississippi State, came back home, uh, you know, loves the program that much. So he's taken on that quarterback room situation. So it's it's been, like I said, a lot more balanced. Shavers definitely has been getting the, the bulk of the targets because Shavers and 
Jalen Maiden actually transferred over from Mississippi State together. So that duo, they got that chemistry. Um, Jesse Matthews, I mean, he he's definitely not as physical. He's not as physically imposing as the Tyrell Shavers, right? But all those uh, intangibles, his his route running is is top notch. Just got to get him the ball, you know, scheme wise, whatever whatever it is, you just got to get him the ball. Um, but it's a team, you know, this team has really had to buckle down. You know, you have that much change in your in your coaching and and your personnel. It, you know, the the days of hey, where are my targets? You know, give me the ball. Like mm-hmm. it takes a backseat. You know, the guys just they need to pull together and just win at this point. Yeah, what about on the defensive side of the ball? How how's that? How are the Aztecs looking? It's like night and day, guys. I mean, last year we had Cam Thomas. We had you know uh, a lot of numbers when it comes to sacks and quarterback pressures and TFLs. And this year, it just it's been completely opposite. You know, it's it's tough to explain because you know, yeah, you lose Cam Thomas to the NFL. It's a big, big you know component to the defense last year, but you still returned. You know, Jonah Tavai, Justice Tavai came over from Hawaii. You got our NIL guy, Keyshawn Banks. The the capability is there, but the numbers just have not been there. Maybe it's, you know, level of competition we've played to this point. Um, I would say so. I think last week against Nevada, they they really turned things around and kind of showed a little bit more of the, of what we're used to seeing. So Keyshawn Banks was definitely one who had his best game of the year last week against Nevada. Of course, it's Nevada. <laughs> they're, they're hurting more than, than both of our programs right now. But. I mean, stats-wise, I mean, it looks like Shawcroft is, is you know, leading the team in tackles. So uh, is he still a factor on, on the defense? Yeah, he actually missed the game against Hawaii two week, uh, three weeks ago, right before the bye. Came back against Nevada last week, and on the second play of the game, hits the Nevada running back. He fumbles our safety, Patrick McMorris, picks up the ball and runs in for a touchdown. So those two players, if I would say anything, uh, Michael Shawcraft uh, and Patrick McMorris, those two guys are basically our two playmakers on the defensive side of the ball, uh, you know, aside from the defensive line. Well, Plutz, how, how crazy is that? I feel like Matt's talking about San Diego State, but if he literally just changed the name to Fresno State, I feel like he's talking exactly about us. We lost Aaron Mosby to the NFL. D-line has has not performed as we wanted to. There's a handful of guys that are making plays. The quarterback position has not been what we expected. Our playmakers just aren't getting the ball as much as we want to. It doesn't it, it feels like it's kind of like we're looking in the mirror right now. Yeah, definitely. It seems like these two teams are kind of running parallel seasons right now, which I feel like it's a cool time for them to meet right now. I mean, yeah. it, really, you got to put up or shut up. And whoever, you know, plays better in this game, you know, probably has a good shot at, you know, representing the West of the Mountain West. Boy, no wonder these two fan bases hate each other so much. Right? It's like, <laughs> it's exactly like looking the in the same, mirror. It's like, it's like looking in the mirror. My cousin's in the valley and we're down at the beach. <laughs> what, what's going on with David Perales, guys? Tell me about David Perales. You not know, much. He, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, not much. He had one one huge game, you know, the, the San Jose State game. He had uh, four sacks or five okay. sacks, how many it was. Um, so, like, he exploded that game. Um, so, I don't know. And, you know, San Jose supposedly has a decent offensive line. So, that was kind of surprising. Um, I think he had a little bit of pressure that he, you know, was producing last week. Uh, but, yeah, overall, been a bit of a letdown. But, you know, if anything, it's showing how important, you know, Aaron Mosby was last season to really draw the double team. And he was able to, <laughs> you know, yeah. still be productive with that. And, um, you know, Perales one on one, he he can do well. But I mean, if he's getting you know a second guy chipping him too, um, it's he's gonna have a hard time getting good pressure. There's been drives. I think it was was it the Oregon State game last drive of the game? Perales was on the sidelines, wasn't even out there on the defense. Like they had him not playing, and not because he was hurt, he was just on the sidelines, which goes to show that he went from a guy who was very highly regarded coming into the season to now he's that top that kind of season is that he's just not even getting some reps in critical time just kind of shows Mm. but then he's got a game where he gets four sacks and he looks unstoppable so he has been he's been in that boat where you're like dude where's that been and i feel like that's kind of fresno state's whole season is logan fife will have a huge run oh that was great 
where's that been? And then the next week it's like Paralysis has four sacks. You're like, oh, great. Where has that been? And it's just the consistency hasn't, hasn't been there. So I think that's been something we've talked a lot about. I want to know more about Logan Fife. Is there anything, what, what does he excel at maybe more than in, in his facet of, of game? Um, we've been a little, we've been a little tough on him. Well, I'll be, let's, let's, we can start there. We've been a little tough on him because uh, fans actually kind of wanted to see him benched uh, yeah, after the UConn okay. game. Uh, when you lose to one of the worst teams in the country, it's kind of like, nah, you know, like, and you only put up yeah. 14. It's, it's really tough. And plus UConn had like 11 hurt starters. So not necessarily a, a great look on the resume. So people were kind of calling for him. And then you put up kind of a goose egg against Boise state. So people kind of were chirping for Henderson. And then we do enough against San Jose state where we win. And then last week against New Mexico, we're kind of like, okay, yeah, th this kid looks good. And he looked the best when he was able to be mobile and kind of use his feet a little bit. We saw a couple of rushing touchdowns from him. So plus, is that, is that about accurate or did I miss anything? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I mean, he kind of surprised us last week with, you know, being able to move and having a couple of rushing touchdowns. So um, yeah, I think he still really struggles with just making some dumb throws. I mean, he has, I think, six picks um, so far. I mean, they've all been bad throws. Like, you just don't need to you know, make that throw, um, you know, which is frustrating. So, um, yeah, overall, if the receivers are getting open, you know, he can hit guys that are open. But, I mean, leading them open or, you know, a tough pass, you know, that's contested, that's not really where he's going to do well. Okay, well, I'll tell you this. We have a healthy respect for Fresno State. As much as we all hate each other and love to hate each other, we know who Jordan Mims is now this year. We know who that name means and what he stands right. for. So, last, last year, he put up put a whooping on that ooh, defense. <laughs> it, it, was, it wasn't something we were prepared to see, thought we were going to see. So tell us, why will the Bulldogs win on Saturday? Oh, oh, you, oh, you oh, want okay. me to go? Yeah, take it. Uh, defense is going to have to win us a game, and that's just kind of how it is. If uh, um, past New Mexico, the three starts from Logan Fife, we had failed to cross the 20-point mark. So we're going to need to – and I believe that's right. Um, it's We're going to need to hold the defense. We're going to need to hold the, – the defense is going to have to hold San, Jose, San Diego State to a respectable sub-three touchdown if we want to win. How dare you let that Freudian slip with San Jose I know, State? I know. Can you believe it? Man, I got to go out. I got to go. Do, I got to do a lap. 100 push ups. Oh, for me. okay. Okay. Just for that, just for that, tell me why will the Aztecs win on Saturday? If, uh, if their quarter, if your quarterback can run, that's like the Fresno State weakness right there yeah. is a mobile Pretty quarterback. Nice. And if he can get it done for those legs, because that's torched us and so it's really simple i mean that's what we were saying about san jose state like i can't believe they didn't run cordero more i mean they could have smoked us if they did that and they didn't so uh, i think that's a big key and you know forcing turnovers with logan five i mean if they're able to kind of mix up coverage and get pressure and force them into bad decisions you know he is very capable of turning the ball over and you know giving positive field position so that way you know at least you're getting a field goal out of that possession so those are kind of the two two main things. All right, Matt. Well, who do you think is going to win? You've heard both of our cases for both sides, but now who do you think is going to take home the dub? Man, it's a tough one, man, because I, I just know this game is going to be ugly. Because every game we've played this year has been ugly, you know, and I think Coach Hoke kind of prefers it that way. You know, he's a defensive-minded coach. To, to, to maybe you guys in Fresno, you see a low-score game, and, you know, it's like, oh, God, what are we doing here? To us, it's kind of the norm. It's probably what he prefers. Um, but man, on the road, you know, I've been to Bulldog Stadium one time. It might be the one time I ever go up there because it's tough to win up there. I mean, the dogs are barking in the stands. It's just, it's just a crazy environment. I have to pick Aztecs, right? I have to pick. Yeah. But it's going to be ugly. I think in order for us to win, it has to be an ugly game. Uh, we're not going to win in a shootout. At least I, I don't think we will. So I'll say Aztecs 20, Fresno 17. All right. All right. Plus, did Close. you give your, you give your uh, score? On yeah. The in our in our preview episode, uh, I I, I kind of predicted the same thing. Like 
for me, like just San Diego State football is just like kind of ugly and weird scores. Like, it, you know, there's going to be a miss extra point or there's going to be a safety thrown in there just to get some weird numbers on the scoreboard. So I think I said, you know, Fresno State comes away with a win like 23 to 19, like something, something weird like that. <laughs> We're on the same lines. We're on the same line. I love it. Well, I think I, I think. I'm still not confident in Logan Fife, and we don't know if Jake's going to be out there. So I think I'm actually going to go with Aztecs on this one. I think the Aztecs do pull it off, and I'll I'll stick with the weird scores. You know, let's say we got uh, 18 to 14 the final final score there. 18 to 14. Very humble of you guys. Very humble. <laughs> <laughs> all right I well think, one... i think i think this will probably be the last time that caleb lets you uh sub in a so smart michael. She's like, <laughs> are, you, are you kidding me michael you didn't even pick the dogs to win oh my god <laughs> gotta, one, you gotta I mean, bring some of that hate you gotta bring some of that hate <laughs> exactly but hey i mean that's that's just kind of how our season's gone though right it's yeah. like you know we we come back you know after the loss to yukon and we're all like oh san jose state's gonna smoke us like we all all three of us picked San Jose State to win easy against Fresno State, and then we we win, and we're like, okay, that was that was weird. So. Yeah, yeah. Mountain West football, man. It football. is, it is. I was gonna ask you yeah. about Sun, Sun Snapdragon, Sun Snapdragon Dragon Stadium, Snapdragon yeah. Stadium, because we usually ask people what to do when and when, if we go to your college town, but like, dude, Snap Snapdragon Stadium, brands banking new. How is it, man? Oh, it's, it's a beautiful stadium, guys. You know, we had to fight for that stadium. Um, it was up to a vote, and the San Diego voters chose it very decidingly. But it's a beautiful stadium, man. It's a, it's a football stadium, one, but it, it can house soccer, concerts, a lot of different events. So San Diego State owns it. We're going to reap a lot of uh, benefits and rewards and, and money from it. So that's a great thing. It's uh, it's the next step. It, it was the necessary step we needed if we do want to make a jump, if expansion does call um, us up. So, you know, it, it's a it's a dream come true for for a diehard like myself and all of us down here in San Diego. And, you know, it, it hasn't been the ideal season. <laughs> the opening game was like a heat wave that I think all California felt, but we felt it really bad on that opening game. It, so it was kind of a fiasco, man, just to be honest with you. But, you know, it, it's going to be, it, it's already a big recruiting tool, as I alluded to on Twitter. We just kept one of our big offensive linemen guys here. He, Fresno State was on his list. And one of the big reasons why guys want to stay home now is because of this stadium, man. It's, it's a beautiful, brand-new home of our own. Yeah. I know you guys know what that's like. You guys have had Bulldog for, for quite many years. And, you know, you guys should be proud about it, man. It's a, it's, that's a, a fantastic venue you guys got up there. It's right. It is. It, it's also old, though. I mean, we're we're kind of in the middle of our own uh, process to try to renovate or uh, uh, figure out upgrades. So yeah, it's kind of interesting there. And yeah, I'm I am excited to to hopefully make a trip down at some point to Snapdragon because uh, the the Murph was um, it was it was old. Uh, I mean, sometimes the old stadium is kind of fun. Like I don't know if you ever been to like Oakland A's game. Like they have like the worst stadium in MLB. But like it's also kind of fun because like the, the fans just kind of embrace it, and it's just kind of gives it a little, little ed edgier vibe for the game. But it's got yeah. character. It's got character. Exactly. It's got charm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But tell me, man, why are there so many fights? <laughs> in the stands at Bulldog Stadium, man. We we had a lot of fun with that fight last year when against Boise. But I mean, just recently I saw there was like like two older Fresno Bulldog fans fighting each other in, in the red seats. Like, what's going on up there? You guys are, are are beating each other up. Honestly, I don't know, man. It's gotta be something <laughs> in the beer. It's gotta be something in the beer, dude. I don't know what it is, but something in the water or something in the beer. I don't know what they're bringing in, but people get a little <laughs> people get a little excited halfway through and start throwing punches at somebody. I don't know what's going on, man. <laughs> I mean, I think it, it's it's got to be all these 745, you know, kickoff times. I mean, you know, uh, it's, it's em, Saturday day it. off. They're drinking, drinking all day. And so, <laughs> plus, I don't know, just people are rowdy at football games, I guess. Do you guys feel like that's a detractor for, you know, getting that expansion invite? They're like, oh, my God, those guys at Fresno, they just want to fight each other. And like, we can't have that. No, you should see our academic scores. Then you'll realize what's the, <laughs> what's the kicking us out. Then you'll realize, oh yeah, that's what it is. It ain't the fights; it's the guys in the in the classrooms. Okay, that's what it is. no. It, it's a we need a new stadium. Our academics aren't up to par, and sadly, after football, we've seen uh, 
just the, the competition level I don't think is is there. So I think we're going to need to step some things up if we want the Pac-12 invite. Fingers crossed, though. Gotcha. Yeah. So, well, cool, Matt. Well, hey, I appreciate you. Good luck on good luck on Saturday. I picked the Aztecs win, but you know what? Kind of hope they lose one more on Saturday. And you probably feel the same way about the Bulldogs, man. So, But I appreciate you. And uh, where can people find Sons of Montezuma? Sons of Montezuma.com. Definitely find us. We have NIL partnerships with players. We do podcasts, articles, all that good stuff. And on YouTube as well. Cool. Appreciate you, Matt. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Go Aztecs. <laughs> Go dogs. Go dogs. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>